welcome back to my channel, welcome if you're new, my name is Shannon and today I am here with a video that I've been really excited to film actually. Um, so if you guys don't know, I am um, a new mum, I had a baby two weeks ago today, um, he's called Buzz and he is the most gorgeous little thing, I'm literally obsessed with him which is why it's taken me two weeks to get around to filming this video <laughs> um, because I just want to look at him all the time and when I'm not looking at him there's like so much other stuff to do <laughs> um, but I wanted to film this video before I forget little bits and stuff so I've made some notes but I'm gonna try and kind of just tell it as if I'm like telling a friend. Um, so basically I don't know if I've even said but today I'm here with my birth story and labour story and all of that stuff so grab a cuppa because I think it will be a long one <laughs> um, but yeah this is a very very positive birth story I will say though obviously you know with a the birth there's always going to be some like blood and you know things like that so if that's something that you don't want to hear about then maybe don't watch this video um, to be fair though the majority of this story there isn't any mention of that it'll be just near the end so maybe I'll kind of pre-warn you again then but um yeah I hope you enjoy this video and if you are you know pregnant or one day hope to be pregnant um and a little bit scared of the kind of prospect of birth and things then hopefully this video will help you because honestly I felt the same up until a couple of weeks before I had my baby and yeah you're here in this video kind of what changed and how it can actually be a really really positive experience and I never thought I'd be someone that would say that so yeah let's get into the video so if you don't follow me on Instagram which if you don't then feel free to it's just at Shannon Lorraine I'll like put it on the screen here um but if you don't follow me over there and if you haven't watched any of my previous videos you might not know that I had a little bit of like a kind of turbulent time throughout my pregnancy with like the um, level of care I kind of received I'd say I didn't have the best experiences midwives were okay but um, there were just some experiences nearer the end that weren't so great and then also my scans through the NHS were not very good either the staff there were horrendous so yes hopefully when it comes to having our next baby we'll have a choice where we can have our scans because I really 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 don't want to go back to where I had to have them because it just wasn't very nice <laughs> um, but we were lucky to have two private scans as well which um, if you guys know me and Ollie, like we're quite like thrifty and we don't really want to spend money on things that we don't need to. But um, at the time of having the first scan, Ollie wasn't allowed in because of COVID. So um, yeah, I'm so glad we went for a private scan, just me and him for the very first scan before the NHS one. Um, and then we also went for a private gender scan, which was so lovely too. So yeah, I would really recommend doing those if you are in a position to be able to. But to be fair, I think I'm very um, just unlucky with the scans that I had because, you know, I'm friends with a lot of people who've had babies recently and things and it seems like there's a noise outside. When is there ever not a noise outside when I'm trying to film a video? But yeah, anyway, loads of people do have very positive experiences with scans, so don't let that put you off. At my 36, 37 week appointment, um, I kind of went in and I had a different midwife to the one I'd been seeing before. So I had seen the same midwife three times, I think, throughout. Um, other than that, all of my midwife appointments had been over the phone because of COVID. So I hadn't had that much face-to-face -face kind of interaction with like midwives or anything like that during the pregnancy. At my 36 and 37 week appointment, I had a different midwife and I walked in and I was very out of breath because a, the hospital was so hot and I was in like a coat and a jumper and a scarf. It was cold outside, so I'd like wrapped up inside the hospital, it was so hot. And obviously I had a baby. I'm not a very tall person and my baby was quite long and he was pushing up on everything inside me and I was constantly out of breath, so um, near the end anyway. So yeah, I was out of breath because of that. And also I felt a little bit anxious just because I had, like I said, I didn't have the best experiences throughout. And yeah, I just don't really like hospitals at all. So I was a little bit anxious, which kind of messes with your breathing and stuff anyway. So I walked in and she was like, is there a reason you're so out of breath? Like that. And I was like, oh, hello to you too. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that wasn't like a great start. And then she basically proceeded to, um, she asked me like what my birth plan was and I said I didn't really have one because throughout the whole pregnancy whenever I tried to discuss a birth plan with my midwife she always said oh we do that right near the end because you know things can change and um but she told me throughout and also on my notes it says I was low risk and um that I could have kind of whatever birth I wanted to have so I was very much of that mindset <laughs> um so yeah I kind of replied to the midwife like I didn't have a birth plan yet and I was hoping to discuss it at this appointment and she was like well yes that's what I'm asking you 
And you know when you're like, you're not being very friendly, hon. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, I said, oh well, all I know is that I've really always wanted a water bath. Sorry if the lighting moves and stuff, I'm literally sat in front of a window, so just is what it is. But um, yeah, I said I've always wanted a water bath. And she just kind of cut me there and was like, oh no, so that'll be one that you're not able to have. And I was like, oh, why? Like, I kind of like laughed, I thought she was joking. Um, and she was like, oh, with a BMI like yours, like you won't be able to have a water bath. And I was like, oh, <laughs> because the midwife I'd seen before had said that I could have a water birth and that I could have a home birth if I wanted and that, you know, like I at the time I was like absolutely no to a home birth because that sounded so scary. Um, but yeah, I just kind of thought I had all the options. And so for her to like snatch that away from me, um, and she basically said that my booking in appointment, my BMI was a little bit too high. Um, to go into the birth center, which is where they have the pools for the water birth. And she said that um, they would need like four midwives to lift me out if I passed out in the water um, during during labor and stuff like that. And it just wasn't very nice how she was saying it was very unfriendly um, and I got quite upset. That was that appointment and I kind of left that appointment not really knowing what I was going to do. Um, but I did know that I know people who are like same size, similar size, bigger, a little bit smaller, whatever, who had had a water birth in a in a birthing centre and stuff, or had one at home, which is surely like higher risk, you know, if I'm too high risk to be in a hospital, then surely I'm too high risk to, to have one at home. Um, but I messaged Louise. If you guys don't know Louise Pentland, then I mean, everyone knows Louise, right? So <laughs> I don't need to say who she is, but she is someone that I actually um, bumped into in Disney World last year, and I kind of spoke to her and I was like, hey, and I was a bit like weird and nervous because I'd followed her for years and years. Um, but she was so lovely. And yeah, since then we kind of follow each other on Instagram and we don't chat lots, but you know, she's someone who's there. And I knew that she'd had a water birth at home and she too is like a, you know, a curvier person. So I messaged her and I was like, I think I did a voice note actually. Um, and I was just like, can you just let me know if you had a similar experience because I know that you got what you wanted and yeah, just I'd love to know how you got around being told you can't do it if you did get told or is just my trust a little bit strict or, you know. Um, so she messaged back and she was like, I absolutely did get told the same, um, would you like me to call you? And I was like, oh, yes please. So we had a phone call that eve, I think it was that evening, with her and her partner actually, I think I was on loudspeaker, and they were both so so freaking lovely and just made me feel so empowered and like that I did have a choice you know and oh, I don't know like if I hadn't have had that um phone call with Louise and Liam <laughs> then I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had the birth that I had like I absolutely wouldn't because they were telling me that I should look into hypnobirthing which was something that we had wanted to look into but again as I mentioned earlier Ollie and I just always kind of watched that sun Ugh, one sec I think we're gonna gradually like move around so the sun's not in my eyes but um yeah so <sighs> that was something that we had wanted to do um but it was something that um we decided not to do at the time because yeah it was like 40 pounds for the like hypnobirthing course which is so affordable really like I don't know why we were being stingy about it but I guess we just didn't know how much it would help us or how much we needed it um but yeah they had done um the positive birth company hypnobirthing course and yeah they were so like passionate about how good it was that i i just knew i had to get it i got off the call i bought the course um and yeah they were just very much and i and liam in the background as well was very much like home births are really great like and it wasn't pushy at all but they were just like really just so positive and so like you know you have a choice i got off the phone i spoke to ollie and we started the hypnobirthing course. The midwife call actually didn't really come to much the next day, I don't think. Um, but yeah, so basically, I think I spoke to them a few days later. But in that few days, that between then and when I spoke to them again, Ollie and I binge watched <laughs> the digital course for um, hypnobirthing, the PBC digital pack, it's called. Um, and we, loved it like this it i know hypnobirthing i don't really know what it was even though i had watched louise's um video about it i'd watched her birth video i'd watched other people's videos i didn't really know what it was still and it basically is just 
knowledge. It's just learning and it's done in such a lovely way like Siobhan who does the videos is so calming and so easy to listen to and easy to understand she she says everything like so nicely she goes over certain bits a few times so it really sinks in and it just clicked with me and Ollie so well and Ollie and I are quite different like I'm very creative and very visual and I don't know like we've got different brains if that makes sense but yet both of us um like he's a lot more logical and mathsy and you know, we're just, we've got different brains for learning I think. Um, but yeah, we both watched the pack and we both got a lot from it. So yes, I feel like this is gonna be a really long video because I'm whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> but I'm just so passionate about how well it went. Like I'm just so happy. So anyway, <laughs> um, yes, we watched that and Siobhan, talks quite a lot about home births too and she kind of talks about the statistics of you know like um medical intervention and things like obviously at home it's a lot lower and yeah just if it's, I think like statistically if it is your second or subsequent birth um it's actually proven to be safer to give birth at home with less interventions, less chance of things going wrong, etc, etc. And basically, um, the reasoning kind of behind this is because to give birth, you have to be quite relaxed, which, you know, if you guys have watched like One Born Every Minute or just any movie ever where someone gives birth or if you hear just people talking about it, all you hear really is like really traumatic stories or drama and screaming and like, just it sounds so scary right and so that's the complete opposite to kind of the the best way that you can be to give birth which is to be relaxed um and that is because she i'm obviously like not a science person but the way she explained it is that you have your tummy muscles for the first stage of labor which is called the latent phase of labor which is when you're having your contractions or as in hypnobirthing they'll say surges um those muscles are like pushing up and that way. So she says they're like coming like this. Um, and that each surge is the muscles kind of tightening and going up like that. And then she said that when you um, get to the second stage, which is to push, um, those muscles transition and they start to push down. So they've moved up, moved up, moved up, and then they push down, which obviously is pushing the baby out. Um, and that is really tiring for your tummy muscles. And for them to be able to do that efficiently, like they need all of your energy, they need all of the oxygen and all of the kind of water and blood pumping to them everything like that like that is where your strength needs to be in order to have like a really like successful birth I guess um but she said that um quite often people are panicked and they have adrenaline and she said that in birth adrenaline is really something that you want to avoid because adrenaline um panics you and when you're panicked your body goes into flight or fight mode which sends all of your blood and all of your energy and everything into your arms and to your legs in order to run because like you know back when we were cavemen or something if there was a threat then we would need to run away um or fight so all of our strength would be in our arms and our legs and she said obviously if you have adrenaline when you're in labor and all of your energy is in your arms and legs that is no use for you you know you can't push a baby out with your arms and your legs so she said you know the best thing is to stay calm to try and avoid adrenaline try and avoid panic and then everything everything that you have will be working in your tummy and doing what it needs to do i'm gonna move again because of the light <laughs> Basically, it's just like the science behind giving birth and it just makes complete sense. Like I'd never considered that before, you know, I never considered how your state of mind can really make a difference to how easy your birth can be. Um, which is funny because I'm really someone who does believe in the power of the mind. Like if you guys don't know, like I'm really passionate about mental health and I've had my struggles in the past and I talked to loads of you guys who have also had your struggles and yeah, I have been to counselling before and it helped me so much. It just, you know, it's mind blowing how you can change how you see something and just like reprogram your mind and it just makes everything make sense. So I guess with hypnobirthing, it's the same kind of thing. Like you're just reprogramming how you see birth, reprogramming your knowledge and just your understanding and how how it can make a difference and also for Ollie as well his understanding um and his knowledge just grew so much and also um they talk through how your partner can support you and yeah the main thing that I really took from hypnobirthing 
is to breathe which sounds really silly doesn't it like we we all breathe all the time but i am not kidding you when i say i got through my whole labor barring about 10 minutes with just breathing i got the app that is also made by the positive birth company called freya i had actually bought that app already because it has like affirmations and it has nice readings and stuff and it also allows you to practice breathing which i'd bought before um but i hadn't really used it i just thought i would use it when it came to counting my contractions and stuff like that which is the main kind of purpose for it it tells you when you're in established labour because um, you record your searches. Anyway, so now I've basically talked about kind of where we stood before labour. Um, I guess I'll just say that we decided after kind of doing this intense hypnobirthing course that we were going to have a home birth, which, like I said earlier on, was something that I absolutely would never ever have considered before and Ollie was the same like we'd seen you know like memes going around you know how you see them where it's like all the family in a birthing pool at home <laughs> and there's like blood everywhere and the baby and they're all like really happy and you know I just had that like image of <laughs> home birth of being a little bit strange um which was completely ignorant but that's just kind of how I'd seen them before even at the beginning of the pregnancy when the midwife kind of mentioned it briefly I was like oh no not for me um but after doing the hypnobirthing course, after speaking to Louise, Ollie and I both were like, we think we want to do it at home. Um, I had always, always, always wanted a water birth. I am such a water baby. I spend all of my life in the bath. <laughs> I love being in the sea. I love going swimming. I just love being in the water. I'm so much happier in the water. Um, you know, like even if you have period pains or something, the bath really helps, doesn't it? So I just, I just wanted it to be in the water. And it seemed the only way I could get that was by having a home birth. Um, also for Ollie, the biggest factor was that in hospital um, at the minute with COVID, I would have had to go in on my own to be examined. And then if I was far enough along, um, then they would let him in um, and then he would be able to stay there whilst I had the baby. And then unless the baby came in the visiting hours of two till six, he would have to go straight home um, and he'd have to wear a mask the whole time which wasn't like conducive to me being relaxed either because a in a hospital environment i am not relaxed if you guys don't know i have lost both my parents and um hospitals just don't bring like great memories for me kind of because of that and i'm sure loads of people feel that way too hospitals aren't generally nice places except for giving birth i guess other, other things are normally people are poorly and it's you know negative connotations of a hospital for me anyway so ollie was very much like well i want to be there from the for the whole thing um i don't want to have to wear a mask i want to you know like he had his reasoning i had mine and they both just came together and we were both like we're having a home birth so i ordered my birthing pool which um, I will link below. I think I actually have an affiliate code. They just sent it out after I ordered it, um, which gives you guys a discount, like if you were to order from it, which I know is very niche and probably no one will go ahead and do it after this, but you never know. Um, so yes, I ordered my birthing pool. I got the one called birth pool in a box and I got it in the regular size, which is like the bigger size. Um, it came with everything. So yeah, that came next day delivery and it was brilliant and it wasn't very extensive either. I think it was about 160 pounds for everything because I'd used a discount code as well, something like that anyway. Um, and yeah, so we ordered that and we kind of started getting bits together to have a home birth. I let the midwife know that I wanted to have a home birth over the phone and we spent about an hour going through everything and I'm not gonna lie, again, she was on loudspeaker and Ollie was there in the call with me too and he got really frustrated because she was so negative. Like she was friendly, but she was negative. Um, you know, not once did she say like, you know, it could go really well and you could have a beautiful baby at home and it could be amazing. It was just like risk after risk after risk after risk, which I know they have to do, um, but it was just a bit, a bit scary. And I imagine it would put a lot of people off, but we just stuck by our guns. Um, I guess I'll say the main risks that she listed were the fact that because of COVID right now, um, ambulances and things are obviously more stretched. And so some days they had been turning down home births on the day. So like people might have had it in their plan and like been set for a home birth, but then they're told they have to go into hospital because there's just not the staff and just not the ambulances in case something went wrong. Um, she told me that normally in like a non-emergency situation, an ambulance would take about 20 minutes, but at the minute they could take up to six to nine hours. And she told me that normally in an emergency, an ambulance would take two minutes, but they would take kind of up 
to an hour, uh, which she said, if your baby is like not breathing, you know, an hour is too long, things like that, you know, like it wasn't very nice, <laughs> um, but I do understand why they have to let you know the risks. Um, so yeah, we had that phone call, we were going ahead with our home birth, um, and yeah, we obviously at the back of our minds had the niggling thing of it could come to the day where I go into labour and they might not be operating home births, but we just thought at least we'd given it a go, like at least, we, you know, even if I was just to labour at home in the pool, like we'd still, we're going to get the pool set up for me to have as like a pain relief, and then we'd go into hospital as late as possible so Ollie could definitely come in. But I guess now, finally, after I've waffled on for ages, it is time for me to tell you our birth story. So it's on Wednesday the 27th of January. Um, that day I woke up, I did my hair and makeup, I got dressed in like the first outfit I'd ever bought when I was pregnant and I only wore it like twice throughout the whole pregnancy. It was some like dungaree things and they weren't really my style but I just saw them on the website, on a website, and I just ordered them when I was really early in pregnancy. Um, and actually, you needed to quite have quite a big bump for them to look like normal. So um, yeah, I, I wore them that day. Um, I will say from the Monday before, so Wednesday is what I was just talking about when I got ready and stuff, but the Monday before, um, like two days earlier, I think I had started to lose a bit of my mucus plug. Um, at first I wasn't sure because like, soz for TMI if it is TMI but um when you're pregnant you have quite a lot of like discharge and stuff anyway um but this did look a little bit different so yeah I thought it could potentially be the start of that coming away um there wasn't lots and lots but yeah there was some and I actually spoke to my friend Kylie because I don't really know a lot um <laughs> I don't really know what to expect and she said does it look like a sneeze <laughs> in a tissue and I was like yeah it kind of does so that made me think that it probably was that but i know that that can kind of happen weeks before you go into labor so i didn't think too much of it like i knew obviously i was due my baby soon so obviously in a couple of weeks or so i would be um having a baby so i just kind of put it to the back of my mind i didn't want to get too excited or anything like that and then i took some pictures which again like i hadn't been doing that every day i'd been kind of doing that maybe once a week or every week and a half or something of just my bump and yeah because I just thought I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to take little bumpies little selfies with my bump and you know just let's just remember this day so I did that we're moving over again and again because of the sun keeps being in my eyes um and there's like just a total mess behind me but ignore that so um yes I FaceTime my friend Naomi um, that afternoon for a little while and we and Ollie just decided we were going to have just a cute little date night. So we ordered an Indian and I don't like spicy food so I know the cliche is to have an Indian and to eat like a spicy curry before so I didn't want to do that because I don't like it so I had my normal korma but we did order a spicy side <laughs> and Ollie put like the tiniest amount on my plate. Um, it was like one bit of chicken and three little chilies and I just ate it all in one mouthful because I just wanted to get it over with and it was so spicy it like ruined the rest of my meal because I couldn't fill my mouth basically. Ollie was like why did you eat it all in one go? I was like I just want it gone. Um, so yeah there was a bit of spice so maybe that did help kickstart things I don't know. We had that, we were watching Enola Holmes on Netflix and then after I had my curry I sat on my ball and I was just sitting there watching the movie having a little bounce and stuff and then near the end of the movie so maybe like seven o'clock, half seven, eight, I started getting um, a couple of little like period pains and I didn't really think anything of it at all because I didn't know that that's what contractions would feel like. Um, but yeah, so they were like under my tummy, like um, really low down, just where you'd have period pains really. Um, and they were, they were very, very slight. Um, but they were, yeah, just a little bit niggling. And I was texting Naomi at the time and she was like, are they coming and going? And like, I was, when she asked that, I was like, well, I don't have them right now, actually. And then like five minutes later, I felt them again. And I was like, yeah, I think they are coming and going, actually. Um, so I didn't, you know, think too much of it. It kind of wasn't really anything. It wasn't like really causing me any pain or anything. Um, but then... I decided to go to bed at about 
11 I think so by the time I got upstairs they were a little bit um, more powerful they weren't like painful but they were just definitely there and they definitely were coming and going um, so I asked Ollie to get me a hot water bottle and um, I decided to pop on my Freya app just to see just to see if it was in my head like just to see is it actually coming and going or what so I did that and on the app you literally um, when you feel the like pain or feeling um, you click like go or whatever and it counts how long that lasts for and then when that feeling stops you press stop and yeah it will keep recording them and and at that time I will just go into the app just to see the timing. Yeah, this was at 9 past 11. I logged my first one and it lasted 1 minute 12 seconds and then it was 5 minutes 49 seconds until I had another one. So at this point, um, I had another one that was 1, one minute 28 seconds and then four minute, 5 minutes later I had another one that was 1 minute 9 seconds. So they were like getting closer together and they were getting shorter which is kind of what happens um so at this stage I was like do you know what people say this happens in the evening like I'd been reading loads of positive birth stories and just reading about loads of different labors in general and people always seem to say that like as it gets to an evening they'll start to get these surges and things and then they go to sleep and they wake up in the morning and they've gone again and then maybe that next evening they'll pick up and maybe then they'll go into labor or maybe it will kind of carry on happening that way for a few days so I thought yeah okay so I'm having some early labor signs I'm having some surges um but you know it might um it might still be ages so what I'd read on the you know these people always say like go to bed make sure you get keep up all your energy like don't just stay up because you'll need your energy for when you go into labor so I was like right I'm gonna go to sleep um while they're not too strong and I can sleep and I'll just get my energy together so Ollie and I got into bed I had my hot water bottle um and I was laying there and I think I laid there for about 20 minutes and then I jumped up and I was like, okay, I can't sleep. They've really ramped up now. <laughs> and um, I said to Ollie, I was like, I think you might need to get that pool up. Um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, in the morning. Like he was still trying to sleep. And I was like, I don't think I can wait till the morning, Ollie. Um, so eventually he got up and at this point I started recording my surges again. Um, so from 11.53 I started recording them again and yeah they were lasting about 1 minute 12, 1 minute 6, 1 minute 11 like that kind of thing for about 5 surges and they were coming every 4 minutes and then <laughs> randomly by um, 12.19 so 20 minutes after I got up out of bed they were every one minute 20 seconds roughly like they were never exact but they were around one minute 20 seconds and they were lasting kind of 48 seconds 58 seconds 47 seconds 29 seconds so they weren't like you know I thought it would be very very regular um I think for it to be classed as established labor you have to have three contractions within 10 minutes and they have to each last 45 seconds around um so yeah they were coming very very quickly and I had asked Ollie to set up the pool and this is where Ollie makes me laugh because he like I said earlier is very like logical but once he's got an idea in his head he doesn't really sway from it whereas I am very much like I find it hard to make a decision and I'm very much like scatty kind of um and yeah he had decided he wanted to take our bedroom door off because when we'd spoken to the midwife on the phone she said she would need like a desk or a flat area to be able to weigh the baby after and also you know if there were any complications and they needed to like rub the baby down or needed to have him on a flat surface basically they needed a flat surface so we have a desk in the corner of my room um which is where I work from <laughs> um but I'm not currently working, so we'd like cleared it down. Um, but the door like opened to one side of the desk and Ollie decided it would make more room and it would just be easier for everyone if the door was off. So he had his little toolkit out and he was trying to take the door off. He was having some right issues. Apparently since then he's told me that they were like cross threaded the screws or something like that and he wasn't able to get them out that easily. Um, but I was like really nagging at him at this point because I was standing at the windowsill. Obviously it was dark, it was raining out and I had my like oil diffuser on and I had like my app counting me through um, and 
I sat on my ball for a bit, but then the ball just got a bit too uncomfortable. So yeah, I was sat like lent up on the windowsill like this and I was just trying to be very, very mindful. Um, you know, with anxiety and stuff, you kind of learn some ways to like manage that. And that is quite often to like count things or to just be very much in the moment. And so I was like counting how many cars are on the road and counting, you know, what I could see and just being like looking out and just trying to kind of be very in that moment um, and not thinking about the discomfort I was feeling. It wasn't super uncomfortable. Um, when you're actually having a surge, it is a little bit uncomfortable, but then you have that respite in between. But I obviously wasn't having that much of a break because it was like every one minute, every minute and a half. Like So that's quite quick. Um, and so I was like, Ollie, the door really, 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 really isn't priority right now. I really need you to get that pool set up and I really need you to call a midwife, I think. Um, and he was like, okay. <laughs> like, I think he realized actually um, I was quite serious. Um, but I think because I'd been breathing and I wasn't causing a scene, I wasn't like being like, oh my God. Oh. I was just very much in my zone and I was very calm. I think he didn't realize how far it was. And I didn't either. Like I was still a bit in denial, I think. Um, because it had only been an hour since I'd started like tracking my contractions. Sorry, there's like dust. Um, yeah, so he started setting up the pool um, and once it had been like blown up and stuff, he then got it like filling up with water. And as soon as that was happening, I was like, right, can you call the midwife please? And I know I sound like I was being really bossy, but honestly, I didn't feel like I had the time myself to call the midwife because the contractions were coming so frequently that I didn't feel like I could hold a conversation with her. So yeah, he rang um, and I have written here like timings because it's a bit all over the place. Um, for me like in my head because it all happened so so quickly i don't know how people tell these stories when they've had a really long labor because i already feel like there's so much to say but maybe i just waffle on by by the time he got to call in the midwife it was 1 48 a.m um and she said she would take about 20 minutes she actually ended up taking quite a bit longer um but yeah so he called her at 1 48 and i got in the pool at 1 50 um before I got in the pool, I took some more pictures of my bump. Um, and I forgot to mention, actually, I had taken some pictures of my bump before I got into bed as well, before the contractions had really kicked in much at all. Ollie just said, take some pictures of your bump because it might be the last time. And he'd also told me earlier that day that I looked ready to be a mum today. So it's all just like we kind of knew it was happening, but we didn't. But anyway, that's just like a little side note. Um, so yeah, he rang her at 1.48 and she said she would be at 20 minutes, but I think she thought she was a lot closer than she was to us. She then rang Ollie at four minutes past two, so that was about 20 minutes later, to say she would be leaving soon. So she hadn't actually left at that point, um, and she arrived at 3 a.m. So yeah, she took um, just over, she took about an hour and 10 minutes to get to us, which is quite a long time. Um, and I was just breathing through this whole time. As soon as there was enough water to like cover my back when I sat in the pool, I got in it because I just needed that like relief. Um, there is like a min line that you're meant to get in it at, I think, but I just got in before because I was in like a bit of discomfort and I just knew I wanted to be in the water. So when she arrived at 3 a.m. she seemed very surprised that I was already in the pool. Um, she was like, oh, normally people wait for me to get here before they get in. And I don't know if I was a bit like, oh, should I have not done that or whatever? I don't know. I feel like I've moved everywhere. I've got my my head and I've got my ball here. Look, here's the ball I was talking about being on. Um, but yeah, so she said that and I was like, oh, sorry, should I have not got in? Like I felt bad, but equally I was, you know, by this point, so at 3 a.m., let me just check my surges. At 3 a.m., by then they were every like two minutes. Um, they were every three minutes, two minutes, two minutes, one minute, two minute, one and a half minutes. And they were lasting between 50 seconds and one minute and a half, roughly. Um, and yes, yeah, so my app had been telling me I was in established labour for quite a while at this point. But I didn't even clock that it said that. Um, but I just knew that they were coming quickly. I could feel them. And yeah, um, at this point, yeah, they were uncomfortable. She came in and yeah she'd asked to examine me and I had said no because I didn't want to get out of the water um because I just didn't feel like I could like I was in like quite a bit of discomfort and I didn't want to get onto the bed for her to examine me 
and I'd also heard that examinations could be quite uncomfortable. Some people say that they're a bit more uncomfortable than labour, which doesn't sound great. Um, and also, once you have had an examination, I think there is a little bit of a risk of getting an infection, um, just because someone like putting their hands up there, even though they've got gloves, like I think it can just, it can cause infection, I've read, and I didn't want to risk that because if I had got an infection, um, I think they can develop quite quickly, I guess. Um, but if I'd got that, then there was a chance that I would have to get transferred to hospital, which I did not want. So I declined the um, examination, which you are more than entitled to do. And she was not funny about it at all. Like she wasn't like, oh, that's like risky or, you know, she was like, absolutely fine. You carry on, like you crack on doing what you're doing. Um, but she did want to listen to his heartbeat, but she had like a mobile... Um, is it called a Doppler? Or am I completely making that up? I don't know. The thingy that they hear their heartbeat on. Um, so she just like asked me to get into a position in the pool where she could do it. And she straight away found his heartbeat and she's like, yep, yeah, he sounds good. He's all good, you carry on. So um, at this point in the pool, um, I'd kind of been swapping positions between, um, so in the pool there was like a blow up seat in there. I sat on it at the beginning a bit, but I kind of quickly realized that that wasn't too comfy for me. So I was like sat kind of, I didn't have like my bum like on the floor. I was kind of like floating a bit. Like I had my legs um, out in front of me and I had like my back pushed up against the seat. Um, so it was like putting a bit of pressure on my lower back because that's where like I was kind of feeling a lot of my discomfort. Um, so I sat like that and then I also would then sometimes get up on my knees and be like lent on the side of the pool on my knees. Um, Basically in hypnobirthing, another thing they teach you is how important it is to be in a good position. They say that when you're on a hospital bed, just laying down, that's actually like one of the worst positions you can be in apparently, um, because it doesn't allow for the baby to pass through as easily. She says the best position to be in is to be in a UFO position, which is upright, forward and open. So for me to be like on my knees, um, leant forward and with my knees like slightly apart was like optimum position, I guess. I guess, um, for the baby to like come down and gravity was on his side and stuff like that. I was kind of swapping between those two positions, whatever felt comfortable. 10 minutes after um, the first midwife who was called Sam arrived, she then called the second midwife called Claire and asked her to come. I think she realized that things were kind of a bit further along than they initially thought. Um, so she actually arrived at about 20 to four. So she arrived at 3.40 a.m., the second midwife. Um, and at this point, I felt like I had transitioned a bit. I started saying that I couldn't do it. I started saying that I was really scared, that it really hurt. I was going to Ollie, this is the most uncomfortable thing I've ever had. Ollie, you don't understand. This is the most pain you could ever be in. Which, like, looking back, I it was like, it does get painful, don't get me wrong. But, like, I think that was the panic. And again, from hypnobirthing, Siobhan teaches you that when your muscles change from going up to then being in a position to start pushing down, um, you get a hit of adrenaline go through your body. And that is when people quite often go through that transition phase um, and they start to panic. And because of that extra adrenaline, so they start saying like silly things that they weren't kind of thinking before or saying before. I think that was literally for about 30 seconds to a minute I was saying that stuff. And Ollie was like, nope, you're absolutely fine. You're doing amazing. Just keep breathing breathing, keep breathing. Um, and Sam, the midwife, was like, you can do it. Think of what's going to be at the end. You're going to have a beautiful baby at the end. And I was like, I don't think it would be worth it. <laughs> um, but again, that was just the like transition talking, the adrenaline talking. And that kind of went quite quickly. Um, but yeah, so when the second midwife arrived, they asked if I wanted some gas and air. I wasn't sure because I... I hate feeling sick and I'd heard some people say that it can make you feel quite nauseous but I also had heard that um, it's quite an instant thing so once you like take in the gas and air if if you feel sick then if you just stop and then you stop feeling sick like once you've breathed it out it's kind of gone from your system so I was like let's just try it um, and at first I didn't really know how to use it and I was like this isn't making me feel any different but then I realised there was a button on the back and then it hit me and I was like oh I feel drunk um, and that was like quite a nice thing because it didn't, it didn't necessarily take away from what I was feeling, but it just made me feel a little bit like distracted, like a, just a little bit jolly again, because I was a bit like, oh, I'm drunk. Um, and I was looking at her and I remember just being like, I feel really drunk. But yeah, that was just for like one inhale. And then after that, I didn't really take any more in. I just kept biting on the um, 
mouthpiece thing. That was like really helpful to me just to have that pressure. Um, and something else that was really helpful was Ollie was like putting his weight down on my shoulders sometimes like he was like pushing quite hard on my arms um, and I think that again took the pressure away from like where I was feeling it down there um, it was just like a different kind of pain that I could focus on not that he was hurting me but you know like it just gave me a different focus um, but yeah so we had Mellow Magic on we had um, my breathing app and I was just in the zone I think the first midwife um measured his heart rate a couple of more times before the second midwife came and yeah the sec one of the times I wasn't in a good position and she couldn't find it but I didn't panic I just like readjusted and then she found him and it was all good so yeah at one point I don't actually know when it happened but um I think it was before the second midwife arrived I had been on my knees like leaning into the back of the pool and then um I was a bit uncomfortable so I swapped into the other position that I said about like laying on my back but not laying just but not actually like sitting on my back, just kind of floating. Um, and as I turned around, um, the midwife went, oh, there goes your waters. And <laughs> apparently Ollie said that the water like went a bit cloudy and there was like some bits. <laughs> um, and I didn't even feel it. Um, and I was like, really? And like, I just felt a bit like, oh my gosh, it's happening. Then I got back on my knees in that position. So when the second midwife arrived, she came through the door and it was just like my bum there for her to see. Um, and I didn't even acknowledge her I could not say hello like she walked in she's like hi yeah, Shannon blah, blah, blah. and I just could not even because at this point my surges were so um frequent that they were basically constant like they weren't even surges at this point it was just discomfort it was just pressure and I just remember saying when I could I need a massive poo which apparently is like the big like ding 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 she's ready to have a baby like apparently that's what midwives listen out for she said there's like three phrases they wait for people to say so they know that they're like having a baby right now um, and so yeah I kept saying that I was like I really need a big poo and I in my head was a bit nervous because um again sorry if it's TMI but before like earlier that evening, um, once I'd started having some slight period pains, I went to the toilet and I had like a bit of like a poorly tummy. And in my head, I was thinking like, oh, some people say that you have this because it's like a clear out, sorry, um, before you have a baby, it's like your body getting rid of everything. Um, but because of that, I was thinking, if I do a poo, it's going to be like a bad, it's going to be like a runny poo. And then, and then I'll have to get out the water because the baby can't be born into that. Like if it was just like a normal poo, they could scoop it out. But apparently if it was a runny poo, they couldn't. And that was what was going through my head. And I was like, I can't poo, but I really, really need to poo. Like the pressure, like I cannot explain like in any other word other than pressure. It was just like, oh, like so much pushing down on my bum, like my lower back and my bum. And then... Yeah, I just kept saying it. And she was like, if you need to do a poo, you do a poo. And then Ollie stole me since with the um, pool kit that you get. You get a sieve. And he went and got the sieve and he was like ready to get my poo. <laughs> but I didn't poo, guys. It was not a poo I needed. It was a baby I needed to give birth to. Um, so apparently there was no poo. And I've asked Ollie to tell me honestly if I pooed. And he said, you didn't poo. So um, I think I wouldn't have had a clue if I did or not. But I trust him that I didn't. So if you do, it's completely normal. I think quite a lot of people do poo because the pressure you feel down there, like, I don't know how everyone doesn't poo, but yeah, I didn't. So yeah, then the like push feeling just got stronger and stronger and my body started pushing. I did not start pushing. My body was pushing this baby. And I thought like when you watch TV, you see people and the midwives are going, right, okay, so on the next one, you're gonna push. And I was thinking that's what was gonna happen. Like I was waiting for them to tell me, but I didn't. I could just feel my body just like doing it for me. I can't explain. And then um, you kind of, again, from the positive birth company, I had a bit of knowledge of like what happens and what is like the best way for it to happen and um, like naturally and stuff. And what Siobhan had said was that the baby will like come down and he'll like push and he'll like knead through. So he'll come down with like one surge and then he'll go back up and then he'll go down a bit further with the next surge and then he'll come back up. And it's just the baby's way of gradually working their way out of your body, which helps prevent any tears um, or anything like that because they're just doing it gently, gradually. You're not like shoving the baby out when he's not ready. Um, so I could feel him bobbing down and then going back up, which was so strange. Um, but then at one point I felt him there, like I 
cannot like in my head like I'd heard it be called the ring of fire and that is absolutely what it felt like it just you could just feel that there was a head inside your nunny like you could feel that your nunny I could feel that my nun had like stretched around a head <laughs> and I was like oh it really burns down there <laughs> and they were like oh have you got the ring of fire and I was like I think so um and then he went back in again and then the next time I felt that I pushed so I pushed and his head was born and then next minute his head his whole body was born so his head was born at 354 and his body was born at 355 a.m and I am certain that I pushed one time <laughs> my body pushed for me <laughs> it was just I had no control this baby wanted to come out and he came out and I had no choice <laughs> um but yeah so it was so magical like I remember her saying his head has been born in a minute you'll give birth to his body and he'll come up in front of you because I was on my knees with my knees open leant on the side and she's like he'll come up in front of you you need to grab him and when he came out he just like slid out and I did not grab him. <laughs> I was in so much shock. I was like, oh my God, there's a baby there. And so the midwife grabbed him and she put him on me and she told me to blow in his face. And so I blew in his face and I was thinking in my head, like, why is he okay? Like, do I need, is that to like resuscitate him? Or like, you know, like I instantly just thought the worst because of the calls and stuff I had before where they were like, this will go wrong, that will go wrong, that could go wrong, that could, you know, I was just thinking like, something's gonna go wrong but I looked at him and he was fine like he was there he was I think crying a little bit like he was absolutely fine but I broke blue blue on his face and Ollie said that he is certain he saw him blow back which I don't know if he did blow back but he definitely went like and the midwife said that that happens so yeah he did that and then yeah we sat in the water for a little while and <laughs> another weird thing I'm a bit grossed out by like veins and like blood and stuff like that um and so umbilical cords for me falls under that category and I felt like maybe the cord was a little bit short because I was holding him and I wanted to hold him a bit higher but when I did like I could feel the tug between my legs with the cord um, and I said that I was like oh the cord is gross and the midwife was like no it's really fascinating if you look at it you can see it pulsating and I was like I cannot look at it. I was like, please, can you not say that? Like, I am so grossed out by that cord. Um, but yeah, I had him there and he was just, just beautiful, like this baby and he was covered in all his vernix and white stuff and he, but he was a baby, like, and he was mine and he was just there on my chest. Um, and then once the cord had stopped pulsating, they cut the cord from him, um, which is called delayed cord clamping, I think. Basically, whilst it's pulsating, he is still getting more goodness from me. So um, basically, once it's stopped, then they can cut it and he's got all the goodness from it. Whereas if you cut it straight away, which I think maybe they used to do more often back in the day, I don't know. But if they cut it straight away, then um, yeah, it's just some of the goodness doesn't go to him. But so they waited for that and then I was able to hold him a bit more freely. Um, and then, yeah, he was basically, we were sat in the water, they'd like put towels around both of us to like keep him warm. Um, and then they said, right, let's get you out. So we passed the baby to Ollie and I got out of the pool. <laughs> and again, something that is gross, but I still had this cord hanging down from my legs, didn't I? I still had the cord hanging out of me. And they asked if I wanted to have the injection to bring on the third stage, which um, if you guys don't know, the third stage is to give birth to the placenta. Um, and I just said yes, because at this point I was just in such shock that I just had a baby and I didn't really mind how I had it. Like I did kind of just want it gone because it was grossing me out. <laughs> um, so yeah, they gave me the injection, which I think was in the top of my thigh or something like that. Um, I don't really remember, but yeah. Then I got on the bed and <laughs> I just remember walking to the bed with this thing dangling between my legs. It's so gross. Like I can't imagine what I would have looked like. Um, but when you've just had a baby, you literally don't care. So yes, I got onto the bed and I thought the injection would give you like contractions to give birth to the placenta I did not know that it meant they were going to take it out of you <laughs> so they literally I was on the bed and they were like pulling the cord and pulling the placenta out of me which oh my goodness like I was just like what is happening I wish I'd had gas and air for that stage because 
Um, I don't really think it was painful, but I just would have liked to have felt drunk and not known what was going on because it was just weird. Um, but it was over so quickly. They, yeah, hands up there, having a little feel around. And they told me that I hadn't got any tears or anything. Um, but then they said they just need to check from the other side and before I knew it I had a finger up my bum which I was not expecting I did not know that was a thing no one has said that before on any videos I've watched so there you go they put their finger up my bum um and they said that was to feel if I had torn like between my bum and my nun and they needed to like feel it from both sides or something I don't know but I hadn't um I had actually been doing um is it called perennial? Per yeah, those like massage things. Like I had um, this perennial massage oil um, because I wanted to prevent tearing and I think it was from 36 weeks or something. I can't remember, um, it said on the bottle, but yeah. So I'd just been like putting that oil down there <laughs> for, uh, you know, not loads and loads, but I'd been doing that a little bit just to try and prevent any tearing. And I did not tear. I had a couple of grazes inside, um, but yeah, no tearing, so no stitches needed, which meant no transferring to hospital, which I was so happy about. Um, so yes, then after that, they asked if I had any pads and um, for some knickers, and I actually had disposable nappies. So um, yeah, Ollie went and got the, one of those for them, and they put that on me, and then they put a pad inside there as well. I don't want to move around any more in this video. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, so they put a pad in as well and they told me that when I went to go for a shower in a bit that I should get into the shower in the nappy and in the pad because there would be like some bleeding and to prevent it going on the floor and stuff, I should just do it in the shower. So I was like, okay. Um, and then they said that um, he needed feeding within the hour of being born. So they brought him back to me and he'd done his first meconium poo. Um, in the towel that Ollie was holding him in and I think at this point maybe actually they took him off me and they I can't remember if they fed him first or not no yeah so um we fed him and then um they took him off me to weigh him I think they weighed him after feeding him but I'm not entirely sure um but yeah so they weighed him and he was seven pounds 13 ounces and they yeah just did a couple of little checks I think and he was all fine so they gave him back to me and then they pretty much went home. I had to look in my notes. So yeah, the midwives went home about half five. So he was born at 3.55 um, and they went home at half five. Ollie was like pumping out the pool, um, which well, luckily wasn't as gross as it could have been. Um, the kit I bought just came with a pump that you put in the pool and it just like sucked it back all out and um, just fed back into the toilet. So there was like a hose, it just went through. Um, and then yeah, there was a liner in there. So you just took that out and like, threw that away and the pool itself obviously because it had been covered completely by a liner the pool itself was like completely clean and fine um so that was really good and then once he'd finished that I um went to have a shower whilst he was pumping it out I started to get a little bit shaky so he bought me um a couple of snacks I think I had a squares bar and a another kind of cereal bar um and I had some drink and stuff and I was just holding the baby I think I was just in such shock like it had happened so quickly and we were just left at home with a baby, like what, a, like, and I didn't go to hospital, like it just went so well, I just couldn't believe it. Um, but yeah, so at half six, I went to have a shower. Um, they had warned me to not have the shower too hot because they said that it might make me feel woozy. So I put the shower down right to cool and yeah, I got in. And this is where I said that I would let you guys know if there was going to be anything like to do with blood and stuff. Um, so yeah, if you don't like blood, then switch off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. But if you don't mind hearing about it, then um, yeah. So I got in the shower and I took off my little nappy. <laughs> that just tear at the sides. They're so great. And that just like fell to the floor and the pad and stuff. And I looked down thinking it would be like, like I thought it was going to be like a heavy period. I looked down and there were like three clots of blood and I'm saying they were like this big. They were like meat. It's disgusting, I'm so sorry, but I would have wanted to know to expect this because I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, oh okay. Like I was literally thrown. I was not expecting that. Like I thought it would just be like bleeding. I didn't think it would be bits um so yeah sorry if that's like really gross to you but I 
really would want to know <laughs> if I were to be doing it again. I wish I did know that that was going to happen um, because then I felt very faint. Like I said earlier, I'm not great with blood and stuff and I think the steam in the shower and stuff, even though I had it on call, I just started feeling really woozy and I remember not being able to like focus on anything. Um, I opened the shower doors a little bit. Our shower is really small, like we have a bath and a shower um, separate, but um, yeah, the shower like cubicle is quite small and I was in there and I opened the doors a bit and I was just trying to get some like normal air, like without steam. And I remember saying, Ollie, I feel funny, or something like that. Ollie said that I shouted out, I'm gonna faint, but I don't remember that. Um, but next thing I know, I was on the floor and I had fainted. I've never fainted before, so that was the first. Um, and I remember just looking around and I was on the floor and there was just all of my blood all around me, like the clots of blood were just like there. And uh, like I said, our shower is really small. I had knocked the um, door off its hinges at the bottom with my foot and my foot was like stuck under there and I'd lost a toenail. Um, it must have like got caught on the door. Um, and so I was just stuck in there and Ollie came running in and he had his, you know, this brand new baby and he just popped him down on the, on the hallway floor because he wanted to help me obviously. And we were like, he didn't know what to do and stuff. And there was no way for me to like hold on in the shower to like get up. Um, obviously, if it were now, I could easily just get myself up, but I just had a baby, like, I was so sore down there. Um, and not even so sore, just, like, so unknown, like, I didn't know how, what was going on down there. I was like, I hadn't torn, but what if I've torn now? Like, you know, like, I just was not, I just didn't know what was going on. And so there was all this blood around me. I didn't want to put my hands down, and I was, like, just sat there for ages and ages, just, like, trying to work up the courage and, like, figure out how to get up Ollie was like just hold on to me and pull up and I was like I cannot do that right now um so eventually I got up and yeah I'd started to like wash my hair um I think I'd wet it but I just abandoned that completely and I just got out and put some new pajamas on and I said I'll have a bath later <laughs> I just was so like traumatized from that um but yeah so after that we were just downstairs just me and Ollie um, we'd had the craziest night, obviously neither of us have slept at this point, um, and yeah, I ordered a McDonald's on Uber Eats, or Delivery, whichever one, and that came about nine, and we just sat there, and we had our newborn baby, our McDonald's, and we were just looking at each other like, what has just happened tonight, like what, and let me tell you, it was the tastiest McDonald's ever, because I'd just given birth, and oh, I, I was so hungry. Another midwife came at about 1.30 that afternoon just to check baby's eyes. They checked his reflexes. Um, I don't think she weighed him. Um, but yeah, she just looked over him and stuff. And yeah, then she went and that was me and Ollie again. So that is the birth story. I hope I've not forgotten anything, but it is quite hard to kind of remember everything in the exact order and stuff. Um, but yeah, basically I started logging my contractions at 11 p.m. and he was born at 3.55. The first midwife arrived at 3 a.m. The second midwife arrived at 3.40. So one arrived 55 minutes before he was born and the second arrived 15 minutes before he was born. So it was all very rushed and crazy and honestly because it was so quick I think I was legitimately in shock for about a week after and I mean like I was actually in shock like I just kept looking at him and looking like I would sit in our bedroom and just look at where the pool was and just be like I can't believe that happened in here like it wasn't like trauma at all because it was just the most amazing thing but it was just like to process it was quite a lot you know so um yeah it was the most amazing amazing birth and I can't believe how lucky we were to get our home birth for me to get my water birth for you know there to be no dramas the midwife just went home yeah I fainted in the shower but I think that was more just from seeing my blood um I did go a bit anemic afterwards though for a few days after um I was very dizzy and I just started eating iron rich food so I was having steak and dried apricots and spinach smoothies and stuff and I soon started to feel a lot better. Um, 
but yeah that is my birth story i do want to do a couple of other videos kind of like essentials um for like postnatal essentials um i want to do like a q a so if you've got any questions but yeah i think um that kind of covers everything that happened that night um i think it's so hard to remember but honestly it was so amazing and there's so there's nothing to be scared of um i really 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 would recommend the um positive birth company though the digital pack is what i did like i said i think it was 39 pounds and it had so much amazing information i just i it just definitely saved our birth and also yeah thank you so so much to louise and liam because if it weren't for speaking to you guys we would have had the baby in a labor ward and i think it would have been a very different birth story because i think i wouldn't have been relaxed i would have been so stressed and panicked and i think it would have probably gone very differently but yeah we were at home we had the lights off we just had the lamps on i had my oil diffuser which had like a nice blue light on we had mellow magic on it was so relaxed and chilled and yeah i'm just so grateful that i got to have that birth yeah please don't be scared if you are pregnant or would want to be pregnant one day but are scared of the birth because it can be amazing like i honestly just felt in awe of my body afterwards and in awe of all women that have given birth because it's like nothing else it i just i just can't i just i have no words i just felt so inspired by all these women and just had so much more respect and appreciation because it's such a massive thing to go through but all in all it's just incredible it does get quite uncomfortable and it definitely does hurt a little bit <laughs> when the baby is crowning <laughs> um but yeah i think you can tell i'm just still in awe yeah, thank you so much to anyone who has sent lovely wishes and cards and gifts thank you so much to louise and liam and just all of my friends and things for being so supportive we didn't really tell people that we were having a home birth because it is a little bit um unheard of i think still for people to have it um for a first birth anyway and yeah it is a little bit risky and stuff like that but we knew it was the best option for us and yeah so to those who i had told and were so supportive thank you so much and yeah i will be back with another video if you've got any questions leave them below if you want to follow our journey please make sure to subscribe i have vlogged a couple of days already with buzz um so yeah please do give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and i will see you very very soon for another video bye i just wanna love you i just wanna